I welcome you all to the radiology grand rounds on virtual biopsy of renal masses by a respected speaker, Dr. Sindhu Kumar. Dr. Kumar pursued her medical school and radiology residency from India, and then she came to the U.S. and trained in body imaging fellowships at University of Arizona and University of Virginia. And she also trained in a neuroradiology fellowship at University of Chicago. As of now, she is working as an assistant professor in the body imaging section in University of Florida College of Medicine, Jacksonville. Um, the lecture will be followed by a short question and answer round. Attendees are requested to put their questions in the Q&A box, uh, which will be answered toward the end of the lecture. And Dr. Kumar, we are pleased to have you for our today's grand rounds. And uh, I also request you guys, I also request the attendees to zoom a little bit because she she has been working on uh, her workstation and it has been difficult for her to share the screen which comes as a full screen at your place so you can it's a kind request if you can zoom a little bit and see the screen in the full screen mode and uh, yeah dr sindhu kumar i hand over to you hi thank you so much uh, for the wonderful introduction shiva and um, uh, good morning everyone and um, Good evening to some of the parts of the country and world. I'm happy to be here and let's get started with our topic today, solid renal masses, virtual biopsy. And objectives are to familiarize with MRI protocols for evaluation of renal masses, identify characteristic MRI imaging findings in different solid renal masses, and also discuss about involving role of MRI aiding in virtual biopsy of renal masses. So introduction, uh, about 20 to 25% of renal masses resected are benign. So renal biopsy with histopathologic diagnosis leads to significant decrease in resection. So renal biopsy is an invasive procedure and with uh, inherent complications like hematoma, pain, hemorrhage, hematuria, and pneumothorax. There is always inherent risk of bleeding inadequate sampling failure to capture the tumor due to heterogeneous uh, nature of these tumors. And many times they are subjected to one or more biopsies due to heterogeneity of tumor, uh, resulting in varied biopsy and surgical histopathology reports with concordance in 52 to 76% of renal masses. So something talking a little bit about uh, radiogenomics. Radiogenomics uh, actually, it, it involves two components. Uh, it focuses on two components, uh, including radiomics. So what is radiomics is, which focuses on improving the analysis of uh, large data sets using semi-automatic and automatic software in a quantitative image analysis of texture and features, which, which is um, provided by the imaging tools, that is MRI, multi-parametric MRI. That is a uh, specific software, which incorporates all these uh, features and uh, really genomics is linkage between imaging and genomic data. So current applications of radiomics in RCC management include differentiation of a benign from cancerous kidney tumors, differentiation of angiomyelitoma from RCC, differentiation of oncocytoma from RCC, and also different subtypes of RCC um, uh, variations and nuclear grade prediction and also evaluation of treatment response of renal masses. So genomics, radiogenomics is out there and um, we are, uh, a lot of research has been uh, uh, happening in this field uh, of um, tumor characterization. That involves actually multiple steps as seen in this uh, diagram. Clinical question formulation and appropriate imaging modality selection, tumor segmentation, image pre-processing, ex extraction of tumor features, and predictive modeling of clinical endpoints. So basically, there's diagnosis of uh, MR using MRI, scan acquisition, radio mix analysis. These models are targeted radio genomics integration, and the virtual biopsy maps are created, and uh, like uh, you know, type 1, type 2, and type 3 curve, predicting the uh, you know, severity of the disease process from, the, from benign to malignant etiology. So what are the advantages of radiogenomics? No additional cost or procedure-related complication or necessity of subsequent appointment for additional surveillance. 
uh, it can evaluate the entire mass rather than a chunk of tissue as we would in renal mass biopsies. Image repeatability also is very uh, feasible with this technology. And uh, practically in every patient, uh, we can repeat and it is really a non-invasive test. So now discussing the evolving MRI virtual biopsy for renal masses using multiplanar MRI renal protocols. So MRI is a good substitute for, uh, radio, uh, for renal mass biopsies and it acts as virtual biopsy tool for non-invasive tumor diagnosis based upon imaging characteristics. So multiplan parametric MRI involves construction of standardized algorithm to evaluate your renal mass. So it predicts the histology of renal masses with an accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity of up to 98%, 85%, and 98% respectively. So the MRI renal mass protocol utilized in our institution is, uh, is as follows. We would uh, get unenhanced T1-weighted sequence, contrast-enhanced T1-weighted, fat spin echo T2-weighted sequence, in-phase and opposed-phase imaging and diffusion-weighted images. Images are preferably obtained in axial plane as it would be a better anatomical view for the radiologist alongside a small field of view with better resolution. And coronal place, uh, plane is also acquired, which, uh, which will help to evaluate kidney and bladder at the same time, which is uh, deemed to be helpful in contrast enhanced sequences. Although the role of GWI is being evaluated, it is uh, we would at least acquire a B value up to 1000, which achieves greater suppression of normal renal tissue and leads to better tumor conspicuity, especially papillary renal cell carcinoma really stands out. So it is ADC dark on MRI. Acquisition of multiple B values helps us also uh, to, uh, uh, to differentiate histologic subtypes of RCCs. So multiple dynamic phase contrast um, MRI on, on at least cortical and nephrographic phases and also delayed phase like one minute and three minute delayed phases are also acquired. So this is a um, renal mass protocol T2 weighted sequence. You can see T2 coronal and T2 weighted um, uh, fat, uh, T2 weighted non-fat sat and T2 weighted fat sat sequences. Here we can see multiple uh, T2 hyperintense lesions in the right kidney as well as the left kidney and um, axial plane and also fat saturated. So this is a sequence we saturate the fat. So all the mesenteric fat, subcutaneous fat is saturated. And if this lesion also saturates to the same extent, then it is highly, uh, then it is a um, good, uh, we can be, uh, we can predict the lesion to be, uh, you know, angiomyelipoma because of the macroscopic fat within the lesion. Diffusion and ADC is another set of images we also acquire. So this is a DWI and this is ADC. So DWI images are acquired in multiple, at least, you know, two, three, four sets. And then ADC is created. Uh, or generated from this for these uh, DWI images. And here in, the, here in this case, you can see this um, uh, T2 bright lesion, which we saw previously on uh, T2 uh, coronal axial images. They did not show any diffusion restriction. It still remains bright on ADC, telling us this is a uh, shine through and this is a benign lesion. Again, in phase and opposed phase sequence uh, is also uh, utilized for, to see, uh, you know, intravoxel fat within these lesions. And this is pre and post contrast enhanced sequences, pre uh, arterial venous and delayed phase sequences, also to assess the um, uh, enhancement pattern, whether it is arterial enhancing or delayed enhancing lesions. So these, uh, these delayed phases were acquired in one minute and three minute post contrast respectively. Microscopic and macroscopic fat containing lesions uh, are also uh, can be differentiated with MRI for sure. And this is uh, an axial T2 weighted uh, sequence, uh, which is uh, showing a um, large uh, exophytic mass in the left um, kidney. And then uh, it shows a signal drop on fat saturated sequence. And uh, you can see this is um, in an opposed phase sequence. This is opposed phase sequence where we see the India ink artifact wherever there is a fat and water interface. So this is a post-phase sequence and this is in-phase sequence. So we can see there are some areas of signal drop within this lesion 
telling us this is there is microscopic fat as well as macroscopic fat. And with contrast enhancement, you can see this is pre and post contrast. There is minimal enhancement, and this lesion was characterized as angiomyolipoma. Again, another case here, there is an exophytic lesion arising from the right, uh, left kidney, which um, again, uh, on contrast enhanced, this is pre arterial and venous phase and delayed phase. So we can see this lesion is definitely enhancing evidently in the arterial phase. And whereas, um, uh, and uh, regarding the diffusion beta sequence, you can see this is DWI and ADC. This is ADC dark uh, or hypo intense on ADC. Telling, uh, telling us this is a high cellularity lesion <clears throat> and uh, it is, it is uh, restricting diffusion. And um, this case was definitely a biopsy proven RCC. So this is a chart which is telling us, um, you know, how to uh, navigate through these lesions uh, when we see solid renal masses. They are broadly categorized into malignant and benign lesions and uh, most common malignant lesions are clear cell renal cell carcinoma, chromophobe RCC, and papillary RCC. And uh, uh, looking on T2 signal, main importantly, we want to look on T2 signal weighted images and contrast enhanced sequences. On T2, if it is hyper to hypo, most of the time it is hyper, and then enhancement is also really uh, vividly enhancing, then uh, it is more in case of, uh, it is more suggestive of um, uh, clear cell RCC. Whereas chromophobe RCC is mostly hypo. Uh, chromophobe is between actually the papillary and clear cell. So chromophobe will have hyper to iso intense and <clears throat> hyper to iso intense uh, enhancement pattern. Whereas papillary is characterized by hypo intense T2 signal and very delayed minimal enhancement. <clears throat> it's a hypo enhancing lesion. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So moving on to benign lesions. Uh, it is angiomyolipoma and oncocytoma are the big ones. <clears throat> angiomyolipoma is hypo-intense on T2, and uh, it can enhance hyper to hypo-intense enhancement. And oncocytoma is hyper-intense on T2 and hyper to iso-intense enhancement. They have a characteristic spoke wheel appearance, and I will show you some images of that. So this is a nice um, chart uh, showing T2-weighted relationship between T2-weighted sequence uh, you know, chemical shift imaging, contrast enhancement, DWI. In clear cell, most commonly seen carcinomas, you can see T2-weighted is hyper-intense signal with signal drop on in-phase sequence, uh, on a post-phase sequence, suggesting um, intravoxel fat, evident enhancement, and decreased ADC. More decreasing ADC values corresponds to increasing Hurman grade. Papillary RCC is characterized by T2 hypo intense signal, and uh, they can be there is signal loss on in phase sequence due to hemosiderin, not on opposed phase sequence. This is uh, hemosiderin is seen on in phase sequence, and there is mild to slow, very slow delayed enhancement pattern, telling us this is a papillary RCC and higher ADC as well. And chromophobe RCC is uh, you know features uh, somewhat in between clear cell and papillary intermediate to low signal intensity, more evident enhancement than papillary, but less than clear cell. It is more than papillary and less than clear cell. And it also has a lower ADC value than clear cell. Oncocytoma, heterogeneous and hyperintense, characteristic central uh, stellate scar. And there is less enhancement compared to the renal cortex. And there will be a phenomenon called reversal enhancement pattern, which we will take a look later. <clears throat> Classic AML definitely have large uh, amount of fat in them, and they can have macroscopic and microscopic fat, which can be seen on fat saturated image as well as in an opposed phase sequences. And uh, they have varied intensity of a T2 signal depending upon the fat content. If fat content is more, it will be more brighter, and if it is less, it will be less. I mean, more it will be T2 dark. And lipid poor AML is always a diagnostic challenge for us, and uh, we will have to sometimes put that in differential consideration. Mostly, a World Health Organization has classified RCC into clear cell subtype, papillary subtype, and chromophobe subtype. <clears throat> and uh, MRI biomarkers, what are we exactly looking in on these MRI images? If, the, uh, if there is slow and evident enhancement pattern on corticomedullary phase, that will differentiate papillary from clear cell RCC 
with 93 to 96% sensitivity and specificity. Papillary RCCs exhibit low T2 signal intensity on MRI and hypo intensity of uh, this um, T2 signal um, also, which can be seen on in-phase sequence is due to hemosiderin in tumor cells, calcium or dense collagenous nature of these tumors. On ADC, then they have a low ADC values when compared with clear cell and a hypo-intense fibrous capsule can sometimes be seen. Clear cell RCC appears as G2 hyperintense mass with intracellular lipid, that is key characteristics, uh, 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 intracellular lipid content, one of the differentiating features. This is a very handy uh, clear cell likelihood score, which was uh, published by, uh, in RADiology journal and uh, RSNA also. And uh, this clearly, um, you know, navigates through the renal masses, how to characterize them. For example, when we see uh, uh, enhancing renal mass, we are looking for macroscopic fat. Uh, if there is macroscopic fat present, AML, we are done. If there is no macroscopic fat, then the route differs. If we are looking for enhancement, how much enhancement is there? Is there minimal or it is more? If it is something less than 25% enhancement, then that lesion is characterized as Bosniac classes, one, two, three, four. Whereas um, uh, more than 25% enhancement, um, we will categorize that into indeterminate solid renal masses. So then we want to look at T2 signal again versus a renal cortex, signal intensity of the tumor with respect to renal cortex. Is it hyperintense, isointense, or hypointense? If it is hyperintense, next step will be to look assess the enhancement pattern. Is it intensely enhancing? Yes. Then, then we want to look at the microscopic fat. So if a lesion is hyperintense on T2, intensely enhancing with the presence of microscopic fat, all these elements are present then clear cell likelihood score is five. That is very high, uh, high uh, chance uh, that this lesion is definitely a clear cell carcinoma. Whereas uh, clear cell likelihood score decreases significantly with other parameters as seen in this um, chart. If it is ISO intense, the differentiation between oncocytoma and chromophobe, we can navigate, we can go through this route. And if it is hypo intense, and uh, if there is enhancement is very little, then papillary RCC will be the way, and then clear cell likelihood score will be one. So this is a very handy chart which our residents allow to look at to characterize renal masses. Looking at some of the uh, classic cases here, on coronal T2, there is a large exophytic heterogeneous mass, predominantly T2 hyperintense. And then on this is an axial, again T2 hyperintense, and post-contrast enhancement, pre arterial and venous delay. Definitely there is arterial heterogeneous enhancement in this case, and this case was a biopsy proven clear cell RCC. Conventional grade three. Whereas in this case, there is an exophytic lesion arising from the left kidney, and uh, which has heterogeneous enhancement. And uh, you can see uh, there is a um, small thrombus. A, this is a, a very, uh, you know, it's not enhancing. So this is more likely a bland thrombus. So any thrombus uh, which is enhancing versus non-enhancing, we can differentiate between the tumor thrombus and a bland thrombus. So very large aggressive lesion. And uh, there was FTG avid uh, left hyalur and anterior mediastinal and lymph nodes associated with this lesion. And uh, based upon this, uh, you know, biopsy was done and then it is confirmed clear cell renal cell carcinoma grade one. There was no sarcomatoid features no rhabdoid features, no evidence of lymphoproliferative invasion. And uh, however, based upon the lymph nodes and uh, metastatic um, uh, staging, this patient was given chemotherapy and it was a clear cell again. Here, another case of um, RCC here, you can see. This case, um, there was a heterogeneous uh, mass in the right kidney and uh, I tried to show the renal vein, but there is no uh, renal vein um, you know, invasion or there is no thrombus. However, on biopsy, there was some thrombus within the renal vein. I'm thinking probably within one of these distal branches, which are kind of hard to see on MR. But most of the left renal, uh, right renal vein is without any significant thrombus burden. Again, large tumor here. We can see there is heterogeneous enhancement. It is extending and expanding the left renal vein with a soft tissue, uh, you know, um, within this. Uh, and the, on this five minutes delayed image, uh, saying that this is a renal vein 
extension. So there is a clear cell RCC extending into the right renal vein. Another case, there is circumscribed, well circumscribed lesion in the right kidney, heterogeneous enhancement. Again, this was a high grade clear cell carcinoma based upon the you know, T2 hyperintense signal and arterial enhancement. There are definite arterial enhancement with non enhancing areas in the center. This was again uh, biopsy proven high grade clear cell RCC. Another classic case of a T2 hyperintense, uh, large mass in the left kidney with a lot of T2 hypointense uh, crisscross septations and nodularity. And uh, this is a T2 uh, fat set sequence, T2 bright lesion. And on this is post contrast enhanced sequences. You can see there is heterogeneous arterial enhancement and uh, clearly depicting this is a clear cell RCC with uh, some lymph nodes, which is better seen on DWI images. So clear cell RCC with sinus fat invasion and multiple uh, regional lymph nodes as well. Papillary RCC is more common uh, in male individuals, third to eighth decade of life, appears a solid, well circumscribed neoplasm with a favorable prognosis. Tumor is frequently confined to the kidney and is small in size. Hereditary subtype is an autosomal dominant uh, um, uh, pattern and uh, it involves, uh, there are multiple bilateral microscopic tumors that are slow growing and present at 60 years of age to 80 years of age. Classic uh, example here, large tumor, T2 hypointense, heterogeneous, and uh, on, on a post-phase and in-phase, there is no uh, significant macroscopic fat here on post-contrast enhancement. Here, the, the, this lesion was um, you know, hyperintense signal on pre before giving contrast itself. So it will be very difficult for us to assess, is there any enhancement here at all? So for that purpose, we utilize the feature called um, uh, subtraction. Subtraction images are obtained, which will uh, subtract uh, the post contrast from the pre contrast and whatever you get is all a real enhancement. So we, here we see some subtle enhancement on the delayed phase, and this was classified as a papillary RCC. And this lesion also had a left renal lesion, which uh, looked very similar to the, the uh, left uh, renal lesion. There is an adrenal lesion, nodular uh, metastasis in the adrenal gland, which also had similar characteristic as the uh, left um, papillary RCC, and it was also metastatic, and it was removed. So papillary RCC, biopsy proven. Again, there is a uh, hypoenhancing lesion in this um, in the right kidney. Again, it was um, by uh, papillary RCC. Moving on to chromophobe RCC, usually six decade of life and it has a favorable prognosis and 55% survival up to 92%. And these chromophobe RCCs are peripherally located and they have well-defined margin and they're associated with renal vein invasion, cyst, hemorrhage, and microscopic fat is present. So chromophobe RCC is frequently T2 hypointense and has heterogeneous consistency. They can be central stellate scar and calcifications at the level of microscopic analysis. Tumor cells demonstrate solid growth pattern and that is well appreciated on MRI. You can see chromophobe RCC has solid tumor pattern with some T2 signal and there is a incidentally detected small simple cyst as well. Sarcomatoid transformation in RCC is rare and anaplastic variant. It's a more aggressive pattern, rapid recurrence, and worse prognosis. Compared to clear cell, sarcomatoid tends to be larger, containing larger peritumoral vessels and increased peri uh, peritumoral neovascularities. Sarcomatoid variant, preoperative tumor identification is very important in this case, which will help the management. T2 hypointense areas exhibiting low contrast, very low contrast enhancement and diffusion restriction uh, in the clear cell tumor region raise suspicion of sarcomatoid. Classic example is a right kidney, exophytic heterogeneous mass, low level of enhancement, and then there is renal vein invasion as, uh, as well. And this was sarcomatoid RCC. Medullary RCC is another aggressive neoplasm, mostly seen in sickle cell traits between 11 to 39 years of age. They have ill-defined uh, infiltrations from the renal medulla, second, uh, secondary to epithelial proliferation. And RCC appears as a large necrotic lesion at the upper and lower renal poles with caliectasis and without pelviectasis. That's a classic feature here. There will be caliectasis without any pelviectasis and vascular invasion with renal vein thrombus and metastatic adenopathy is possible as well. So this is a classic example of... Um, uh, um, this lesion, 
And you can see calyptosis without pelvic disease. Calyx is dilated. That is one feature we can see here. Urothelial neoplasm, again, is very, very common. You can see uh, the upper pole calyxes are dilated. And uh, there is ill-defined heterogeneous tumor filling this upper pole calyx, extending to the renal sinus. And again, heterogeneous enhancement. This was biopsy proven high-grade urothelial carcinoma. Renal lymphomas have various uh, different patterns of uh, appearance on MRI, infiltrative lesions or nephromegaly. They can be low to intermediate signal T2, hypo-intense lesions in the bilateral kidneys possible. They have very high signal intensity on TW high, and they have very dark signal on ADC, uh, telling that this is a very high cellularity lesion with um, due to Brownian motion of the uh, some molecules. And again, ADC is up to 0 0.64 to 0.76. Uh, this uh, is highly suggestive of a, a lymphoma. And on contrast enhancement, they have homogeneous con enhancement pattern. This is a classic example of um, uh, uh, this uh, lymphoma. You can see bilateral kidneys are enlarged in size. And uh, you can see um, uh, diffuse enlargement as well as on PET. There is multi-station lymph nodes bilateral axillary, um, retroperitoneal, and you go in mediastinal, and then uh, you can see increased FDG uptake in the kidneys, and retroperitoneal, pelvic, and inguinal lymph nodes are very, very well FDG average. And it was a um, case of lymphoma. Another classic example, you see soft tissue, which is surrounding the uh, renal pelvis. So you can see the, the ureter is crossing by but uh, there is a significant amount of soft tissue, but still there is not a lot of hydronephrosis as expected as these uh, lymphomas, they do not obstruct usually the structures um, which is uh, going through it. And you can see there is relatively homogeneous enhancement and significant diffusion restriction, very dark on ADC and bright on DWI. This is again biopsy proven lymphoma. Another presentation of lymphoma is perinephric infiltration of soft tissues here is extending to the para renal and posterior para, para renal spaces. And also it is extending towards the uh, renal, I mean, splenic hilum, pan pancreatic tail. And despite large tumor, the splenic vein is coursing through it. And um, you can see um, splenic vein is nicely coursing through it. And perinephric infiltration of lymphoma is um, another, um, uh, presentation here. So case nine, you can see a lot of uh, retroperitoneal adenopathy. Um, and uh, you can see there are small uh, uh, soft tissue masses in the bilateral kidneys, and uh, they definitely show diffusion restriction, and they are another classic presentation of lymphoma. Again, case number 10 has a you know, very unusual case, spleen, large spleen, a lot of nodular perinephric soft tissue masses. Uh, this was classic case of extramedullary hemopoiesis. Again, you get another case uh, of a perinephric uh, in fat infiltration. Uh, but the FDG avidity is not that. You can see for the level of uh, perinephric infiltration, there is no, not a lot of uh, FDG uptake. And this was a case of um, iodine chester disease. Um, Again, um, benign renal lesions, angiomyelipoma is a large one to talk about. And 5% uh, of AML has uh, little fat and can be diagnostically difficult sometimes. This is another classic case of uh, um, uh, the renal mass where there is, uh, there is hyper intense uh, lesion in the left kidney. And uh, you can see uh, mm, there is, um, this is, um, um, T2 fat sat sequence where there is significant signal drop here. So there is macroscopic fat present and on post contrast enhancement, you can see there is a um, uh, significant uh, fat drop on opposed phase sequence uh, saying that there is um, microscopic and macroscopic fat with the characteristic appearance on ultrasound. You can see echogenic nodular lesion here, constellation of findings, this is angiomyelipoma with chunks of fat. Case 12 here, you can see um, uh, there is macroscopic fat here as evidenced by T2 uh, fat cell sequence. There is signal drop on this uh, lesion here, T2 bright on fat set, it drops signal. 
So there is macroscopic fat, and this was another case of um, NGMI lipoma. And again, uh, here there's a larger lesion in the uh, right kidney, which is um, uh, a pre on pre. This is pre and post contrast. So there is a hemorrhage, a hemorrhagic component with this lesion, and uh, on post contrast is very difficult to evaluate whether there is any enhancement. So subtraction image is very handy. Uh, in this particular case, we can see significant amount of enhancement along the periphery of this lesion. I, this patient was uh, sent for embolization and by IR colleagues, and you can see the, the right renal artery was uh, catheterized, and then you can see a lot of um, vascularity, mostly along the periphery, and then post-embolization with alcohol was performed, and then these vessels are all you know, taken care of. And this patient comes for post um, uh, embolization uh, MRI scan after you know two months, which we see here. The, there is a, again we can see this large mass, but there is um, uh, this is again there is hemorrhage within the pre T1 pre before giving contrast and arterial venous space. Very difficult to see whether there is any subtle enhancement. However, again subtraction helped us to say that there is no significant enhancement. All the enhancement which we saw here and along the periphery has all gone. So the satisfactory, very good treatment response in this case. And uh, that was a clear cut case of AML. Lipid poor AML is always a diagnostic challenge. However, there can be, uh, they can be similar to papillary RCC on T2. But uh, the differentiation from papillary RCC is that uh, there can be uh, AML exhibits intense enhancement in corticomillary phase, whereas papillary will have slow and heterogeneous late enhancement. Another uh, benign etiology I want to talk about is oncocytoma, which uh, has a characteristic spoke wheel enhancement pattern. And uh, segmental enhancement inversion pattern is a phenomenon which we see on oncocytomas, particularly with an example here, large exophytic lesion arising from the right kidney. And you can see it does have a G2 hyperintense uh, spoke wheel type of appearance. And uh, this is a pre post contrast enhancement. On arterial phase, you can see a lot of peripheral enhancement and the central scar is not enhancing. And uh, so, but what happens the delayed phase, there is a reversal of this pattern, which we can see, uh, it's called segmental enhancement inversion pattern. You can see this enhancing portion has all starting to wash out and it has become decreased and more contrast enhancement is more towards the center. So this characteristic pattern of uh, a segmental enhancement inversion uh, phenomenon is very helpful to differentiate oncocytoma from other renal masses. Inflammatory renal masses, uh, xanthogranulomatous spironephritis is a big one. It, it does have characteristic paw sign, uh, bare paw sign, which are rounded hypoattenuating lesions enter, uh, centered on the renal pelvis, extending to the cortex is very classic for XGP. And there also can be heterogeneous mass with solid and cystic airy components surrounding a stagon calculus. So technically, uh, uh, etiology of this XGP is that a calculus develops initially and it, uh, it forms a nidus for, uh, you know, for, for infection stasis, infection and repeated bouts of pyelonephritis can, can present as a pseudo mass like appearance and sometimes it is difficult to do. It is uh, important for us to differentiate it from other solid renal masses. And classic, this bare paw appearance is very classic feature and with associated staggon calculus and cystic areas in the um, cortex um, filled with uh, lipid laden macrophages is very characteristic feature in this uh, etiology. Here you can see uh, all this classic appearance of, um, you know, uh, fluid filled spaces, bare paw um, appearance here. And then there are multiple stones here and appearing as a pseudo mass and stag on calculus, classic case of XGP. So calculus forms an idus for further bouts of uh, hyalonephritis and uh, this uh, chronic appearance and surgery is the um, uh, ultimate uh, treatment option for this. Moving on to this classic case, which uh, came as uh, on CT, there was very benign appearing circumscribed lesion with central hypoattenuation, uh, whereas uh, on ultrasound, also very benign, soft, uh, smooth, uh, soft tissue mass with not a lot of vascularity at all. And then this gets patient gets an MRI and uh, you can see on MRI, it's very T2 dark, very, very T2 dark. 
and then with the hypo, hyper intense central area again t2 dark and then very homogeneous enhancement if we had seen this lesion in the uterus there is no confusion that we will call this a leiomyoma so this was a, a biopsy proven classic um, renal capsular leiomyoma an unusual uh, case sometimes uh, you know, we had this so in summary, renal masses have very distinct features on a multiplanar MRI, which will facilitate us to differentiate between common and common pathologies, malignant and benign etiologies, and uh, that's where, and helping for effective management uh, options. And uh, but for the research is always needed to conduct to significant to signify the role of virtual biopsy in renal mass surveillance, particularly in the field of radiogenomics, which is uh, in a big way these days. With that, I. Um, conclude my uh, talk here. I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you very much, Dr. Kumar, for the insightful lecture and for the beautiful images you incorporated in your presentation. I'm sure all of our attendees would have learned a lot from this lecture. Uh, as of now, I'm not seeing any questions. So attendees are requested to put their questions in the Q&A box if you have any questions. Thank you, Shiva. And uh, no questions as of now. So I have a general doubt which I was thinking. So um, I am aware about the radiomics and the radiogenomics because we have also been working on the same. So I was awesome. kind of, uh, yeah, I, I was wondering if you, if you have any clinical uh application of these in your at your institute or is it just in the research phase uh, actually it's a good question uh, it's just in the research phase at our institution uh and you know it's uh, eventually we are trying to bring something like uh, incorporating the mri with the radiogenomics but uh, right now we are not doing that uh, so it's in the research phase as you said okay and uh, do you feel that it has uh, some good potential in differentiating, like you mentioned, that oncocytoma with CCRCCs and angiomyolipomas, fat poor angiomyolipomas with CCRCCs. So, do you think that it has some good potential in differentiating these? Radiogenomics, right. yes, I do. Yeah, I do think, uh, but you know, let's see what uh, how it uh, turns up. Not sure it's very uh, early to say anything about at this point. But, uh, you know, it would be very helpful, particularly to differentiate chromophobe, medullary, oncocytoma, these very, these confusing, uh, you know, lesions. Whereas clear cell and all this, it's pretty much straightforward for, on MRI, papillary, clear cell. But there are some lesions, you know, like lipid poor AML. It would be nice yeah. if we can definitely come up with uh, more research work and more output. Yes, got it. So you do think that virtual biopsy is something which we look forward to? Yes, I do. That's good. Um, we do not have any questions as of now, so it gives us a way to conclude early today. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kumar, for the lecture. I'm positive that all of our attendees... Uh, no, actually, there's a question right now. So did you state that the ADC of PRCC is high? higher than CCRCCs, or did you mean low or lower, since I thought you mentioned that PRCC restricts? Yes, papillary RCC, yes, it, it restricts diffusion. And uh, we have seen that uh, uh, significantly that, and I believe that uh, papillary RCC do have more diffusion restriction. And it or, is dark on ADC. Yeah. Thank you for answering the question. Uh, people are very appreciative in the chat box. I can see people appreciating the lecture. Um, yeah. Yeah, people have been appreciative in the chat box. All sure. right. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that uh, all of our attendees uh, learned a lot from the lecture. And I thank you uh, from the Health for the World uh, team for bringing up this insightful topic for thank our you attendees. So much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the meeting now.